it's a blessing to be here. Um, thank you for having me again uh, to the wonderful, to everybody at the Spiritual Light Center. This place is a, um, an absolute blessing. Uh, there, nothing like this exists even in uh, like Asheville. There's nothing like this place. Uh, it's very unique and clearly filled with beautiful people. So thank you for even uh, for being here uh, to listen. So today I'm going to get a little personal. Um, I'm going to share a story that I hope everybody can relate to about how nature, uh, nature's profound healing power. And uh, I haven't shared this story too much. So um, I'm going to try it out. So for a long time, when I was young, I, uh, from about 18 to 30 years old, I'm 38 now, I had a very serious drinking problem. And, and I'm not afraid to to, for a while, I was ashamed of it when I began my spiritual journey. And now I'm open about it. And it's something that I think is a part of, of, of my own path. And I had a, you know, I, like I said, I struggled with alcohol for many years. Uh, all kinds of negative things came from it. I was arrested a couple times, uh, you know, uh, woke up in, uh, a padded cell before that was a harrowing experience. Um, you know, caused a lot of, I saw all the problems I was causing in my life, my, uh, to my mom, my dad, my friends, families, lovers. And that destructive behavior continued through college, continued through, so high school, college, uh, beyond college into young adulthood. And then something miraculous happened. Uh, you know, by the way, say up to that point, I had been struggling with uh, my own kind of inner demons, um, my own sense of not belonging, my own fear of not being accepted that stemmed from me being adopted. And so all of that kind of simmered and, and came up in the form of, of alcohol abuse. And that went on, that destructive behavior continued to spiral. Uh, about two years before I consider to be my spiritual awakening. Uh, I remember I was driving one night and uh, I had been drinking and I, I nearly, uh, collided into a semi coming in the other lane bad stuff you know and and i was if you believe this or not i was teaching college still at the time so great example i was at the time too for for all those young students well, that behavior continued to to go on until something miraculous happened uh i got my my dog abby uh who's home right now sleeping we had a long day of hiking yesterday so she's a little bit tired or else she'd you know, have a playmate today. So she's, so when I was about, you know, I'd say about 29, uh, Abby came into my life and we, uh, I was living in upstate New York. And as anybody knows, when you have a puppy, she was eight months at the time, they have endless energy, endless energy. Uh, and so the only way to work that energy off was to get her out into the woods. So up to that time, my relationship with nature was not, uh, you know, I, I'd gone out to the woods here and there. I always loved nature, but it wasn't something that I was like, uh, it wasn't something that was the center of my life. So with Abby, it, it forced me to start getting out into nature every day. At first, it began at the local parks, you know, for a half hour, 45 minutes a day. It's about 10 years ago. And then it started extending to about an hour a day. And, Still, Abby's energy was was as was as was as frantic as ever. So we had to do that to two hours a day. So I had to start venturing out to state parks, and you know, finding new places to hike. And I felt something starting to happen within me. Uh, my drinking sort of began to subside. 
the heavy bouts of drinking became more far and in between, but I still felt like when my suffering would manifest and feel intolerable, I would go back on big drinking bouts. So I wasn't drinking as often, but I was still drinking recklessly and abusing alcohol. So I continued to still get out into nature. At this point, it was still to kind of get Abby's energy out. And uh, then something really began to happen where the healing impact of nature went to something that was just good for relieving stress and helping me control the drinking to something that became an inner transformation where the healing effects of nature now became a part of me, where the earth became my deepest spiritual expression and practice and guru and God. So about a year and a half after I had been starting to get into the woods with Abby, I went on a, I had the really blessed opportunity to take a trip out to Maui, Hawaii. Um, anyone who's, has anyone been to Hawaii before? I mean, other than this place, which has my heart and soul, Hawaii, I've never experienced anything quite like the transcendent beauty, the raw earth connection as that place. So I went to Maui for about 10 days. And those 10 days felt like part retreat, part um, mystical experience. More importantly, it healed my soul. It was a, it was a healing journey. I felt like I was actually being rebor reborn when I was in Maui. There was this one, uh, one day that really spoke to me. I was out uh, hiking this beautiful trail. Uh, and there was a little side trail, a little blaze trail. And I started to explore it. And I remember it was about a quarter mile going down the blaze trail. And it popped out at the end of uh, just, it fell off into the ocean. It was a cliff. And as I entered, I came through this deep forest. On both sides of me were these most beautiful plants I had ever seen. One was like this fluorescent green tropical plant on my left, and then like a neon orange plant on my right, something I, plants I had, I've never seen like that before. And I remember, I, I don't know why I just bowed <laughs> to both of the plants. And then I went, and this is before I had studied meditation, before I had even studied, you know, I had some introduction to Eastern religions, and but that just felt intuitively like what I wanted to do. So I bowed to the plants and then I walked over to the edge and out in front of me was the vast expanse of the Pacific ocean, uh, bright, sunny day, you could hear birds chirping. I can still smell the ocean air. And for the first time I, I sat down, uh, you know, I, it's going to sound weird, but I, I removed all my clothes. I sat down for the first time in my life, I, I, I sat in, in stillness and meditated. And I can't really explain what happened then, but the, I felt, the only way I can really put it is I felt like I was being reborn. That's it. And after that time, I realized that nature was beyond something that was just my stress reliever or just something that was good for my mind and my body and beyond something that could help me with my my addiction with alcohol what nature represented literally was my connection to god to the goddess to the one with many names it became my my deepest form of spiritual connection so when i came back from maui uh i, I at the time i was living in nashville tennessee at uh, that point in time. And uh, immediately when I got back from Maui, I started making, I continued my daily nature walks in the state parks around Nashville, which for a big city has quite a bit of nature around it. So I was very lucky. 
Uh, I took up meditation practice. Um, I, I started studying with this teacher uh, named Dave Smith, who uh, was trained by uh, Jack Hornfield. Some of you may know who Jack is. Um, and uh, it was in the tradition of Theravada Buddhism. And I had a, a wonderful human being, Dave was. And nature opened me up to exploring meditation more deeply to explore and make peace with the nature of with the nature of my own suffering well as my as i continue to explore meditation practice as i continue to get out for daily walks in nature uh you know my my drinking began to come less and less and less suddenly instead of going out and having eight drinks you know i'd have one or two you know, and I just started scaling back and I started craving alcohol less and less. I wasn't totally clean yet, but I was craving it less and less. So then I moved. So then I had an interesting course of events that happened. I got a uh, let go from a teaching job and uh, they thought I was too controversial on campus. I guess I was too much of a hippie in their mindset. So they booted me off campus and paid me off for a year. You know, it's interesting how how uh, when you when you when really when you think terrible things are happening, this is one thing I've learned on the path that things that you think are really bad at the time. Oh, my gosh, I was let go from my teaching job. What will my parents think of me? The shame I felt. Well, then the grace of God gave me a year paid off. Like It doesn't happen. So I so I took the opportunity I moved off to the mountains and that's how I ended up here. Uh, so I wound up in the, in the smoky mountains. I had been camping out in the, um, while I was living in Nashville, I had been taking trips, camping trips out to this area, uh, actually Pisgah national forest. And I wound up first in Brevard when I was let go from my job. And then I wound up in Franklin and, uh, I've been here for most of my time since 2000, uh, 15 with a couple interludes out in the Colorado Rockies, exploring those mountains. And over the last five years since moving to the mountains, I feel like I've deepened my relationship even more with nature. Now it's something to me that's not even like, like today I just spent before I came here. Uh, I was here, I was in already in the woods for two hours today. I have some national forest behind my place. And I, and I have daily walks, I, uh, you know, in nature, I spend during the summers, sometimes upwards of four or five hours a day, you know, hiking in the in the in the mountains. It's just, for me, it's a, it's something that I would actually call as my salvation now. Uh, how many people feel with their relationship with Christ, which by the way, is a beautiful and time-honored relationship. Jesus, of course, is one of many of our enlightened masters and, and beautiful sons of God and daughters of God. But uh, for me, the earth is my savior, is my saving grace. And I think, you know, w w without, without the earth, I don't even know if I don't know if I'd still be here. I, I think I would have probably either A, killed myself with drinking, or B, wound up in prison, or C, uh, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, maybe ended up in some kind of uh, psych ward, just lost my mind. Nature has, has, has kept me uh, rooted in spirit. It's, it's, been, my, it's been my healer. It's been my teacher. It's been my guru. And I think uh, there's something about the wild that enhances our sense of connection to all that is. When we're out in the wild, we feel a true sense of connection. We, set, we feel a true sense of humility. I'm sure everybody here can relate to this. You know, when you're out in nature, you feel like you are, there's no illusion of separateness. You feel like you are part of a greater whole. There was something, that, there is a vast 
web of being that you are a part of, not separate from. And I feel that every time I walk through the woods, I feel that every time I'm overlooking a glorious sunset, I feel that way every time I'm standing on top of one of these majestic peaks that are out here. I mean, heck, I even feel like that just walking out on my deck every day and seeing just the, this, the mountains right there. I mean, you don't even have to go climb a peak to feel it. You could simply just sit on your deck or, as Doug said, sit in your garden and just contemplate. I mean, we're so lucky to, be, to have this as our backdrop. And, and so you feel that sense of connection. And nature, to me, also fills me with this sense of uh, total freedom, total freedom. And I think that freedom comes from, you don't have to be anything else than who you are. That's it. When you're out in nature, you're like, you, you see all these beings, the trees, and you're like, they're not pretending to be anything than they are. They just are. The snake doesn't try to deceive anybody, trying to convince it it's something it's not. The deer prance effortlessly with the freedom of the ages. You, 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 you can be who you are when you're in the wild. And you realize that you are part of a greater cycle where life and death aren't these like dueling counterparts. They're actually one in the same. Life becomes death. Death leads to rebirth and hence more life. It's a continuous cycle. And you see that through the processes of nature. You see that with the tree that even as it's dying, I say that in quotes because it's not really dying. Even as the tree is dying, it's still giving life. You know, you see that, you know, everywhere when you're, when you're out in the wild. So freedom, a sense of connection and belonging, right? Belonging. You feel a sense of belonging when you're in nature. And I, and I just think, you know, in my own journey, it has been, I'm, I feel like I was almost like, let, like something, something deeper. And, and the fact is, that is what it is. Something deeper, like a, uh, call it God, call it the will of the divine, call it karma, uh, call it absolute being, whatever term you have for it. That's what led me to the mountains to develop my relationship further. And it's my intention down the road to share that with others. I, uh, like many people who reach start reaching their middle, their middle ages, I'm going to be 40 in a little over a year now. I want to devote my life to bringing nature to others, to help heal others who have been through similar bouts of suffering. And by the way, some of the, some of the suffering I've been through is nothing compared to some of the suffering that, that others have been through. You know, so I don't want to make my suffering out to be somehow more important than anything else. It's just it, everybody has their own suffering. But I want to share that with others. I want to share nature with others because it can heal. Not only can it heal your mind and your body, it can heal your spirit. And so I think I'm going to devote my life to hopefully setting up one day a refuge center where those who have suffered can come and heal. And I think out here in these mountains is where I'm going to do it. You know, it's going to set something up out this way. And I just wanted to come and really share my story today, as opposed to having like a, a, a tip, a normal lecture or talk, which I've done in the past. I just wanted to share my own story with you all. It, it has been a saving grace. Um, and, 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 and these days I feel more spiritually enlivened. I'm no longer consider myself an addict. I feel a peace and belonging 
that I've never felt before because of my connection to nature. And I would encourage everybody here, if you haven't already, which I'm sure looking at how, how looking at all these beautiful conscious beings in this room, I'm sure all of you have explored your relationship with nature. So please don't take this as condescending. Explore your relationship with her though. The earth is one of our most, not one of our, our most profound connection to the reality of being and to yourself. So I just want to thank uh, everybody for allowing me to, to speak today. And I'd like to hear from everybody in this room, anybody who's comfortable speaking, uh, whether they feel the same kind of connection, whether they, they've experienced the same type of healing from the earth that maybe I've experienced. I'd like to hear some stories that maybe people have have would like to share about how maybe the earth has has helped them heal and has helped them through their periods of suffering if anyone's comfortable sharing or anything The closest thing, Bill, what you're saying is when you're out, when you're connecting with nature, you're home. You're home. And that pressure in our society of having to fit in, of having to conform, that pressure's not there. And all you have is pure, um, unfettered spirit. You're home. I know exactly what you're talking about. You can, there's no image in the wild. There's no, really what you're saying, Bill, is there's no, there's no awareness of ego when you're out there. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh. I don't think you have to be in the forest to do that because I could leave the Environmental Resource Center where I volunteer mm -hmm. and I go up Bidwell and there's a certain lady there that has a absolutely magnificent garden. Oh, yeah. And I can at different times drive by and something different is happening. Mm -hmm in her garden mm. then i go home and i drive up my driveway and i've since stopped mowing and i just let mother nature take over and it's just absolutely amazing mm. all the different what people call weeds 
that I don't consider a weed anymore. They're just beautiful wild flower and I'm doing yeah. nothing. I'm not fertilizing, I'm not watering, I'm not, and mother nature is just making this palette. It's just absolutely, you drive up the driveway and it's like, wow, when beautiful. Did that happen? So to me, I don't have to be in the forest to do that. I can go up Bidwell oh, or yeah. any other areas in Franklin, like right now I was telling, I was saying how right in the front here, how still really nice it's looking out front with Mount <laughs> Laurel. You don't have to go, not only do you not have to go to the forest, you don't even have to necessarily be in the mountains at all or the, or out here. I mean, my, I went to go visit, uh, thank you. That's a great point. I went to go visit uh, two friends last weekend in uh, Charleston, which is by all accounts a big city. And I felt at home with the nature that they brought into their house. Just, I, and I commented to my friend about that. I'm like, I'm amazed. I've never really visited a city and still felt at home with that sense of connection with nature. They have a big patio in the back and they probably set up like, you know, 30, 40 plants. They have palm trees in the back. They have, uh, they have a beautiful garden that they've set up in the back. And I felt like I was still home. So you don't need to, yeah, you don't need to go into the forest or go to the top of a mountain to experience that. Uh, it's, you know, and you can bring it to you. And like I said before, just simply going out on your deck, you can have that same experience. You don't need to even go walk too many steps to have it. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's uh, interesting how much of a, uh, I call it the great forgetting, <laughs> you know, the, the idea that like, we've like, how have we forgotten? Because we are of her. How have, it seems like as a society, we've forgotten how much, how our true sage is mother earth. Oh, how we've forgotten. But there's constant reminders every day of her omnipresence of her beauty of her transcendence all you have to do is just wake up in the morning and look up at the sky or at nighttime when the moon when the moon emerges the wonders of nature are everywhere to be found anybody else want to share or My, my voice comes in, and goes <clears throat> both times after I have finished, you know. <clears throat> I just absolutely cannot wait for it to get the time of the year when I can go to my garden. Mm. And sometimes I start by splitting a bag of pine bark and I can take a few handfuls out with my hand mm. and then pretty soon I'm working for a couple of hours and you are at total complete in the hands of God and mm. spirit and no problems exist for the time that you can be there mm. and uh, I've, I've, I had a problem with from, no, you're, from, you're, from, from something different. Well, you and sound I, amazing. I, Everything you're saying is completely beautiful. Yes. Um, and um, I, I praise God that I can work from the 10 minutes to an hour and have that experience in my life. And I do believe my friend Sue has told me that it gives joy mm -hmm. to other people who see it. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's beautiful. Thank you. And what was your name? No. Beverly. 
Beverly, that was beautiful and moving. Uh, wow. I, I mean, that, that's absolutely beautiful. And I hope you get to spend a lot of time with your garden. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm Claudia. I'm 77 years old. And I just moved here to be with my sister, Sue. Oh. She's not my birth sister, but we've been sisters and friends for 30 some years, 40 years. That sounds and, like sisters to me. And I, I <laughs> come to visit her just about every year, every other year, she and, and her husband and stay for a month. And I love it here. And my uh, youngest, I left, I'm a California native, several generations. And I left California and all my family and moved here in February, beginning of February. February and, 1st. And uh, it just, I now have my own home and I, take my little dog for a walk. I don't go far, maybe half a mile, and walk around and I just see all the, every day it's a new plant, a new flower, a new, what people call weeds, I call beautiful little flowers. And um, it just fills my soul. That's what I, what I do. And I'm so happy. What a blessing for you to, to wind up out here. That is, uh, it, and anybody else? Uh, come move, move from afar out California. here. California. Yeah. So everybody, I mean, a, anybody who's found this place, I mean, this, and for those of you who have grown up here, uh, for those of you who grew up here, you all are so blessed and incredibly. This is this is without a doubt. I'll say it. This is the most beautiful place I've ever been. You know, I've I've been, I've traveled all around the nation, and this is by far the most beautiful place I've been tied with maybe tied with Maui Maui and this or Maui but now Maui is like a special place in my heart but these mountains there is something truly mystical and divine about this place uh the signs that you'll sometimes see uh that it's God's country that's not inaccurate there's something very true about this area so anybody else want to share Please. One is very new and one is very old. Yeah. Maui is new in terms of the earth, the age of the earth. And the Smoky Mountains are very old. Yeah. And it's maybe the newness and the oldness mm. that makes it so special. I, I think so. That's beautiful. I never really thought about that. I think there's definitely something to that. These these mountains, there's it, these mountains give off the the energy of like this these wise. It's like the wise ancient mother, who's like you know. I once wrote a piece actually called uh, uh, Two Ranges, One Teacher," and it was about the Rockies and the the Rockies and the Smokies, but yeah, I think definitely there's that ancient wisdom of this place, and then the birth, the the new the the new the the youthful energy of of Maui. You know, certainly, I think there's something to that. Yeah, and it's still growing. Yeah. When I went to Hawaii, it's so interesting that you talk about this. I, I, I decided I wanted to go and spend some time hiking and I went to Kauai, which is, you know, kind of like Maui. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just, just chicken growing around. But I went to this one trail called the Kilalao Trail and I was wearing some bad hiking shoes and totally wiped out my feet before I, I it was a two-day hike to get to where i was going to go and uh so i got there and, and and i had to take my shoes off because they hurt so bad and it was a beach 
and there was a cave in there and I went in and blind fish were in this little creek. And I put my feet in that creek and it literally healed them. I, I, I got out, I put my shoes on and at late, later on I started the two day trek back along this trail painlessly and I got to this one point where I was just so filled with awe where the trail came right up to the edge of a cliff like you're talking about. And I looked down over the cliff and stared out into the ocean. And then I looked down closer to the shore and there was a humpback whale with this baby. Wow, so cool. Just right there looking it was why well, was of course i was way up but looking right straight down it was crystal clear it was like like it wasn't in water and she would come up and breathe and then the calf would come up and she would lift the calf with her fin with her dorsal fin and i just sat there for i i don't know it was everything just disappeared Wow. That's, that's, that's an amazing story. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. Well, thank you for allowing me to share the story and thank you for listening and being here and thank you for sharing your stories if anybody else wants to share in a minute here we'll wrap it up sure in talking about, in talking about the different places whether it be maui or california or here in franklin or wherever i think we all have places that really humble us when mm -hmm. we are there. And for me, it's always been Arizona out near Sedona. And to just oh, yeah. go there yeah. and literally, as you said, it's the feeling you take your clothes off, your, your socks, your shoes are off, and you feel the attraction from the earth pulling you in with all the vortexes and the different things. And Thank you, Doug. Um, and thank you so much. That means a lot. And Sedona, Sedona is unbelievable. Sed Sedona is unbelievable, Doug. I, that that place that place resonates at another level. I'll just say that. So I I, I feel you there. I had very profound experiences there. But thank you, everybody. You guys are beautiful. <laughs>